what a perfect day to be outside fall doing some photography what's up guys so today's episode is going to be all about the note 10 plus the note 10 and the note 10 plus pro mode so a couple disclaimers real quick before i get into this this is going to be a very similar video to the other pro mode videos that i've put out uh, however if you have if this is your first time with a samsung phone that has with a samsung phone in general or a samsung phone that has recently updated to android 9 or above then this might help you out uh, if not and you've already watched my other pro mode videos it's going to be very similar so that being said let's jump into it so today i'm going to show you the inner workings of pro mode and go over all the settings and kind of what they're for and how to use them a little bit and then i will talk about at the end how i use them and maybe show you guys a couple examples so hopefully that'll help you take your photography to the next level and figure out the pro mode in the samsung galaxy note 10. all right so let's go ahead and open it up i'm just going to double click on my power button since it's the easiest way to open it up so by default we're going to be in photo mode so i'm going to go ahead and slide that up to pro mode so now that pro mode is up we're going to see a lot of things here the first thing that you're going to see when you pop into it let's do that one more time is this right here raw and jpeg will be enabled uh, so what that means this is the first benefit of shooting in pro mode is that you have the ability to have the raw image and also the jpeg so that's if you're going to want to edit your photos, uh, anything like that, this is having the raw is going to be much more powerful and it's going to help you out a lot more in being able to edit a little bit more uh, and keep the image quality really good. All right, so let's start with the basic stuff on this side of the phone. This is the camera settings that we're going to be most interested in. And the first one is ISO. So again i have tutorials on iso if you want to know more about it you can watch this tutorial but basically iso is your sensor's sensitivity to light and if you want good photos uh, really clean image photos you want usually to keep your iso nice and low so our base iso here is 50 and you can see if we increase it it increases the brightness until that's overkill so it goes up to 800 iso so that's going to be really good for when it starts getting darker then uh, if your shutter speed's already maxed out, then you can start pumping up your ISO. So we like to keep that at base or as low as possible until we need to change it. The next thing up from that is going to be our shutter speed. And this again is going to control the amount of light coming into the image via how long the shutter is open. So we can go super fast, one 24 thousandth of a second, all the way up to 10 seconds and you'll notice that everything is white and that's because it's showing that if I were to leave my shutter open for 10 seconds right now it would be way overexposed too much light so you can bring it down and you'll start to see anywhere in there is looking good the next thing we have in the same shutter button you'll notice the f 2.4 number listed under there so we can change that right here this little guy and switch it to f1.5 so that's our aperture so the samsung galaxy note 10 plus among other galaxies has the ability to have uh, to switch your apertures and you can do that right here switching it back to f2.4 lets in a little bit less light if you want to let in more light or get a slightly more shallow depth of field you can switch it over to f2.5 and then readjust your shutter accordingly so those are very handy, especially when it gets to night or if you want to do faster uh, action stuff, things like that. The next thing we have here where it says standard and it looks like a little pie guy the, is the picture profiles. So right here you'll notice it has color temperature. I can slide it up or down. This is basically white balance. Uh, and this is not where I would recommend changing your white balance. But basically what this is going to allow you to do is you can adjust the tint the contrast saturation highlights shadows and get them where you want them if you have a specific scene in mind or you don't want to do much editing bring up that contrast a little bit bring up those shadows bring down those highlights so that's a picture profile so now i can go in here and hit this arrow key after i have the way i want it 
and I hit this arrow key, back it up. So that's the picture profile that I have and then you can save that. And that's a picture profile for if you don't wanna edit. It used to be a lot more functional when they had the video, but they don't have pro mode video anymore. So I really wouldn't do that because I edit all my images anyways. So you'll notice how it says manual now. Uh, if you go back here and you hit reset and then you go back, it'll show standard. And that's kind of what I keep it in. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the little MF with the target. So this is our auto focusing. And if you, first of all, if you wanna do manual, all you gotta do is click on it and then start dragging it. And then you'll see everything is out of focus now. And if I put my hand here, it'll start showing when my hand is in focus. So right there, and you'll see that it's on the flower. The flower means macro. Basically, Samsung is telling you that your focus is something very close to you, close to the lens. If you click on this again and you go all the way up to the little mountain symbol, that is infinity. So now you see that my hand is not in focus, but the background is in focus. And that is the manual, uh, that is it set on infinity, which is what their mountain symbol means. So if you want this in autofocus while you're in pro mode, all you've got to do is go back in here and tap the manual till it says auto, and then you'll see those little yellow dots go into town. It's focused on my hand. Now I take it away. It's focused on the background, and that is the auto focusing. So the next thing on the list going up is the WB with the 5500K. So it's gonna start you off in daylight situation. That's what I'm at right now. If it's metering and you're in auto, it's going to uh, give you the best white balance possible that it thinks. Uh, if you have different lighting situation or you want a different look, a, day, uh, a night for day look, or if you wanna warm things up or whatever, you can adjust that through the slider. The warmer numbers, the higher you go, the warmer that's going to make it look and the lower you go, the colder that's going to make it look in daylight. So if you wanna know more about white balance, again, I have some beginner photography classes and I have one on white balance, you can check that out. But that is your white balance. If you want the camera to deal with it while you're in pro mode, you can still hit the auto button just the same as the AF. So the next thing you'll see right up here, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see the little zero and the little plus or minus. So that is your exposure compensation that will tell you when I'm changing my shutter speed, you'll see the numbers change now, uh, and it's hard to see, but now we're seeing a plus two in red, and that's telling me I'm two stops overexposed. And then if we drop it down, we will see a minus two now, and that's in red. So that's telling me that it thinks that I'm two stops underexposed. So that's kind of a guide to help you figure that out and pick the right exposure. But again, if you're in pro mode, then you have the ability to determine what the right exposure is because maybe I want it a little underexposed because the highlights in this case are too bright and I want to expose for the highlights. So it's telling me that I'm a stop underexposed, but I kind of prefer that in this shot because I want to shoot for those highlights because it's harder to recover those highlights than it is the shadows. So let's look over here on the left side so the first thing we have is the flash you can turn that on or off it will not turn on or off automatically like the other ones like it does in the other settings and that's because this is pro mode and it's up to you to determine whether or not you want it but you can click it on then you've got the timer here if you want a two five or ten second timer if you want to be in your photo or if you're taking you know you want camera shake out of it uh, you can also have it say capture uh, anything like that it just did it so that's what the timer's for and then we've got the ratio here so we can change the ratio of what we're seeing and the image ratio if you want a square for instagram or completely full uh, i leave it on the four by three because that's pretty standard for the photos that i want moving on up we have this little target symbol looking thing again so this is our metering we have three options for how we meter and by meter i mean how does the camera pick what is the right exposure and this is where it's going to decide to uh, focus on. So metering center weight is one option, and then we have uh, metering matrix, and then the last one we have is spot metering. So spot metering will be if I just click this spot right here, then it will expose for that spot that I touched. And you'll notice how that spot is much brighter than everywhere else. If I focus on this darker area, it will 
focus there and then if I had this in auto that's what's going to matter so you have to make sure you're in auto for that to be effective for your auto foc for your auto exposure so now if I click on there it's brightening it up and if I click over here it's darkening it up because I have it on spot metering so I usually keep it on center weighted that takes the average of the area in the center of the frame and it does the best job that it can with metering although if you do touch a darker area like I just did there it will brighten the image up and expose for this area that I've clicked on and the same for if I click on these highlights now it's exposing for the highlights based on the center weighted so that goes along with this guy over here the AF and that's what these little dots are telling me for the autofocus in this point what it's focusing on if I put my hand there you see them blinking like crazy it means now they're focusing on all those points at my hand and if I move them away now they're focusing on the points that are lighting up uh, back there by that bush and you see these points are not lighting up so they're not really focusing on anything if it's nothing's going on down there so the last thing we have up here is this little matrix grid looking thing and this is the autofocus points so that is how many of these things the little yellow dots you're seeing the little yellow squares so you can change it to autofocus center and it will have the autofocus there in the center and only have one point or you can change it to multi and now all the points are back up so I usually leave it on multi there's not really anything I'm doing there but you don't see it when you have it set on center because it's just one set to the center so leaving it on multi is usually fine for most things. All right, so that's pretty much pro mode. And like I said before, there's not really too much that has changed outside of the fact that Samsung took away the pro mode video features, but I've already made videos on that. I'm not gonna go into that, but hopefully that helps you and gives you a little bit of a guide as to all the settings in pro mode and the things that you can do with it. As for how I would use pro mode or how I have used it, uh, how I use it now, some of the things that I like to do are nighttime stuff. I really like having pro mode at nighttime for long exposure uh, light trails like this. I also really enjoy waterfalls, long exposure stuff like this. Uh, being able to put uh, a neutral density filter in front of your camera or clip one on, or there's a lot of different ways you can attach neutral density filters. I got videos on that, but being able to do the long exposures with the water, I really enjoy that and pro mode is perfect for it. Uh, and then action stuff, being able to really control your shutter and open up your aperture and be able to get some really great action photos. Uh, it's great for that. It's great for a lot of stuff. Anytime that you want to have control and know what your camera's doing, know what your settings are, then pro mode is going to be perfect for that. And it really opens up the possibilities for the photography and what you can get out of these phones. So I'm going to wrap it up there. If you guys have any questions about anything I went over or didn't go over concerning the pro mode, as always, leave those in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos every week. Hit that like button if this video helped you out. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. There is a giant squirrel right there. Oh, he's fast. All right, I'm gonna go shoot some birds and squirrels in the face. I'll see you in the next one.